did you get under those hoods, Mr. Emery? They don't sound like... Oh, 1956s, huh? Look at those two. They still think they're flying P-51s. Bring those idiots in. Take it easy, Emery. You can't get to the bottom of a steering problem on a test block. Oh, hello, Mr. Scott. It's nice to see you down at the ground, sir. Anything I can do for Not you? Not a thing, Emery. I was driving those two cars. Project engineer Dark in the lead car, sir. Test driver Benson in the second car. Benson and Dark, that figures. How's it going? How's the test going, Dark? Looks like you're still in business, Emery. How about you, Duke? Same here, Johnny. Just like driving a baby buggy. Hey, Emery. How about another try? What do you expect? The steering wheel to come off in your hands? The big boys stepped up the weight of this model, didn't they? Okay. Well, how do we know that the pitman arm won't crack on the stress? Because I okayed the design. Everybody wants to get into the act. Who was that genius, Johnny? That gentleman was Mr. Scott. I didn't say a word. Proving ground. Mr. Scott, it's Mr. Fielding. Bring them in. Yes, sir. Yes, Jim. Scotty, when will you get it through that thick skull that you are my chief engineer, not a grease monkey? Ed Winston just pulled in. You better get over here in a hurry. He's a stubborn fool. That makes two of you. Why don't you listen to him for once? Because I am running this plant, not Ed Winston's stockholders. All right, Jim. I'll be up as soon as I take care of things down here. Where did those idiots go? They took off for the obstacle course. One of those knuckleheads wrecks a car, I'll... I'll spank them personally. Right. Lucky you got out of that one. I'm sorry, Johnny. Benson, how many times have I got to tell you this is not Indianapolis? A test car with all that mileage on it is worth more than than ten guys like you. So help me, I ought to fire you. Well, let me know when you make up your mind. Ford's been waiting to hear from me. Benson, I'm warning you. Duke had nothing to do with it. I told you this had happened. The Pitman arm, a clean break. Mr. Scott, I've got a blueprint of a new one in my office if you'd like to see it. Go take care of that cut. I'll be in your office in five minutes. I want this entire steering assembly sent up to analysis right away. Junior. Now, there's a design for you. Oh, new, isn't it? Mm hmm Very new. Oh. Huh, me? Now. Yeah. Me? All right, men. You've seen it before. Come on. Mr. Scott, you're trying to avoid me. I didn't see you, Liz. Now, that's just it. A person can slave in this office for days, absolutely ignored. You're absolutely right, Miss, uh, uh, Miss Kent, Johnny Dark, Duke Benson. How are you? Well, what happened to you? Oh, slight automobile accident. Slight? Yeah, you should see the car. I'll bet. Mr. Scott, may I see you alone? If these gentlemen don't mind. Why, Mr. Scott? I'll see you on your office, Johnny, and take this character with you. <laughs> Honestly, Scotty, I'm just getting desperate. Dashboards, dashboards, dashboards. It's getting so I dream about them at night. One more, and, and I think I'm going to crawl right into a glove compartment. Look, Liz. At Fielding, everybody's got their patience. No matter what name you go by, young lady. You've only been working here three months. I've been now, working... No, no, no. You fight your battles with your grandpa. Now, you know very well I'm not allowed within a mile of his office. Scotty, a big wheel like you could get me out of this monkey cage. Oh, I want to do something important. 
Goodbye, Miss Kent. But I'll see you later, Liz. All right, Johnny. Where's that drawing? In the top drawer, sir. Nothing like the orderly scientific mind. Wait a minute. One of these. Who authorized this? Well, it's nothing important, Mr. Scott. Sports car design by Johnny Dark. It's something of my own. I had the experimental design work it up for me. Sports car for fielding motors? Are you out of your mind? Don't you know the boss's motto? Our goal, safety and strength for six. Six, the average American family. Signed, James Fielding, president. Mm. Spheroid combustion chamber. Over at Cam. It's a fielding motor, Mr. Scott. Even the basic chassis is right off the line. Now, where's the Pittman arm design? Oh, yeah. Mr. Scott, calling Mr. Scott. You're wanted in Mr. Fielding's office now. Uh, it took me 20 years to get him to put in a loudspeaker system. No, I can't get away from it. All right. Make out a work order for a couple of these and I'll sign it. As soon as they're ready, we'll test them. Real bright friend you've got there. Horsing around on a test track. I think he likes me. <laughs> He's right. You could have been hurt. Forget it. Did you see the way he looked at these? It's a good design, Duke. I know it is. Sure, it's a good design, but what good's it gonna do us on paper? Someday we're gonna build this car. Hmm. I know. Out of bailing wire and paste. But it's the public speaking, Jim, not my syndicate. The public just isn't buying enough of your cars. And I say they'll never buy enough to please you fellows. What round? The last. They're both on the ropes. You people buy into an industry. All of a sudden, you know everything about it. Safety and strength for six. Six, the average American family. A soundly engineered, comfortable automobile. That's the formula on which I built this company. All right, Jim. Let's forget current production. I want to know what you're doing about the border-to-border -border race this summer. I never heard of it. Mr. Fielding, the industry has gotten together to introduce the American sports car to the public. It'll be a race of international importance. The data's in your folder, sir. Is this it? Yes, sir. Jim, you shouldn't have done that. The sports car is a legitimate concept of design and engineering that's sweeping the world. As long as I am running this company, a fielding will look like a fielding, not a contraption for overgrown hot rodders. Now, anything else on your mind, Ed? Jim, a fight for control can be an ugly thing. And our stock holdings are larger than you imagine. We acquired the Harding block last week. Dan Harding would never have sold without telling me. Call and ask him. Scotty, do something. Get hold of Kennedy and Owens. Tell them I want anything in the department they can find that could pass for a sports car. Sketches, blueprints, anything. Darling, we didn't even have a convertible or a station wagon till last year. What do you expect to find? Yeah, you're right. Anything that crew sends up would look like Jack Benny's Maxwell. Hey, get Johnny Dark in engineering. Tell him I want all he's got on that sports car. Tell him to bring the stuff here. Anyway, hey, good to see you. Sorry I was held up. So am I. But you know how it is when you have a new project on the drawing board. Oh, Jim, about that X-150 model. We're just about ready to... I'm sorry. <laughs> kind of forgot it was top secret. Scotty, would you kindly explain what in the What word? makes me think anything is a secret from Ed Winston? You're right, Jim. Ed, we're going to build a sports car that should be the answer to anything Detroit can throw at us. And when that fielding comes roaring down the finish line this summer... Well, maybe I'm crazy, but just a minute ago, Jim was swearing he'd never build a sports car. The Adam boys have nothing on Jim when it comes to secrecy. Right, Jim? Well, maybe I do like to keep things under my hat. At least until I know they're right. What does she look like? What's under the hood? Now, hold everything yet. I said she's still on paper. Now, look, I understand you production men don't like to let these things out, but if you could just give me an idea. 
Abby, locate Johnny Dog. Tell him, like it or not, I want him to bring all the sports car material to this office. You know, these engineers can be pretty reluctant boys when it comes to showing their brain children. Your reluctant engineer's just arrived. What took you so long? Wait here. Yep. Wrong end. Thanks. And look at this. He shot in the frame and gets his strength from this cross member and saves 200 pounds. As a matter of fact, this whole power-weight ratio should produce outstanding performance. It's a good idea, Jim. In fact, very good. Well, this sort of relegates your standard chassis to the scrap heap, doesn't it? Let's not forget that this Model X-150 is an experimental model. Well, what about the styling? Is this it? Well, uh, Jim hasn't okayed it yet, but whatever we come up with should be pretty good. From what you've shown me, I can believe it. Russ, Wallington, how's it going to feel to have something new to sell, huh? I've always said there's nothing wrong with any business that fresh ideas won't cure. Jim, it's going to be a pleasure to report to the boys that Fielding Motors is on the right track. Yes, as Fielding Motors has always been. Now, when you finish your tour, Ed, we'll meet for lunch. Right this way, Mr. Winston. You'll find quite a few changes since last year. Tremendous changes, Mr. Winston. An entirely new filing system. After you, sir. Who is this? This is Johnny Dark. Oh. Your engineering genius. Just his right hand, sir. Well, come in, come in. Go on in, genius. we better keep that right hand up. Your idea for a spheroid combustion chamber strikes me as being pretty good and fairly new. It's not too new. It's about 10 years old, although I've added some pretty special wrinkles. Well, I hope they are wrinkles and not bugs. Doc, I'm authorizing you to go ahead with this project. Well, what do you say? That's wonderful, sir. I just don't know how to thank you. Don't try. Just run along and put that car together. We'll have all the departments move right in. What does that mean? That I move out, Mr. Scott? Well, that's a tough assignment, Johnny. You'll need help. Well, don't misunderstand me. I want help. I, I just don't want to be moved out to left field, that's all. I don't know how to make you understand this, but, well, I've lived with these plans for such a long time, and... Don't I'm... worry about it, Johnny. It's your baby. You'll be in charge. All right, Doc. Any other conditions? No, sir. Mr. Fielding? You're going to get a car that'll make anything else in this plant look sick. The kid's eager, Jim. He can't stop punching. Don't hold it against him. I have no intention of holding anything against him, not even for coming up with that harebrained design. Jim, you can't mean what I'm thinking. Just what you're thinking. That's exhibit A for Winston whenever he shows up. After that, I never want to see or hear of Dark's car again. Without a chance? Without a trial? Just like that? Just like that. I'm playing for time, Scotty. If Winston wants a proxy fight, I'll be ready for him. What happens to Johnny Dog? That budding young genius who's going to make my cars look sick? Until he learns that we make practical cars for practical people, he isn't worth a thin dime to us. He's going to be a mighty unhappy young man. Well, if he gets too unhappy, Scotty, you can hold his hand for him. And, Scotty, I want that car ready for Winston on his next visit. I've met a lot of mean, miserable men in my life, but never anyone as ornery, as, as... As self-opinionated, as egocentric, as downright cantankerous as Jim Fielding. Abby, I don't know what I'd do without you. I've been telling you that for years. Now, Abby. Oh, look at you, pale as a ghost. Anybody think I was proposing to you? Abby, what am I going to do about that boy? 
Kind of reminds me of myself when I was a kid. You're going to tell him. Maybe. But I'm not licked yet. Of all sports car contests in the world, the 24-hour race here at Le Mans, France, is the most demanding. It is now the seventh hour, and the French Gordini still leads. Through the long night, the interest of the spectators never lags. The car's got to be tough to take that 24-hour grind. So does the driver. Remember that, Duke. Hello? Oh. I'm Miss Kent, remember? I remember Miss Kent. Body styling. Of course. Well, yeah, let me help you. Uh, I worked all night getting these out, Mr. Dark. Of course, they're still a little rough. You worked on these? Oh, I don't have to tell you how excited I was when I found I was assigned to this project. It could have knocked me over. Me too. Well, allow me to introduce you to some of our staff. Uh, this is Smitty, Hi. one of the best all-around mechanical engineers in the business. Uh, but a wolf, you better watch out for him. Oh, this is Carl Svensson, specialist in carburation, father of five. Six. Uh, six. You can trust Carl, within reason. I'm Duke Benson, test driver, the best. A trustworthy escort for all occasions. Oh, and uh, that's the chief. Um, nothing but hydraulic fluid in his veins. Pay no attention to him. Uh, skirts on a sports car, Miss Kent? Well, if you want a fender line, Mr. Dunn. Uh -huh. Well, they can also cause brake fade. Brakes need air. I suggest you take a look at my original drawings. Well, I already have. Mr. Dark, a car isn't just a means of transportation. I it should be a thing of beauty. Something to live in. What, no stove or refrigerator? All right, if you don't like my ideas, that's all right with me. But I don't have to stand here and be insulted. Well, this looks very pretty to me, Miss Kay. I think the placement of the radio between the seats is very original. And so do I. That is not a radio. Of course, you have to figure it out. But you see, when a, a drop of rain hits this gadget here, the top goes up automatically. You see? We don't want to hurt your feelings, Miss Kent. But, well, we were expecting a... Excuse me. I know. Somebody important. Top man. Marge, this is Johnny Doc. I'd like to speak to Mr. Scott. Mr. Scott, Styling just sent me a Miss Kent. You know, the lady with the dashboards. There must be some mistake. Couldn't break anybody else in, Johnny, so I gave her somebody new. A stylist with a fresh idea or two. And she's got them all right. Thanks. Well, I guess you're it, Miss Kent. Well, I wouldn't want to be forced upon you, Mr. Dark. That's all right, Miss Kent. And I certainly wouldn't want to interfere with your ideas. That's very nice of you, Miss Kent. Well, I'm glad we understand each other. If you want me, I'll be in my office. Hi, Duke. Hi. We're invited to Scotty's tonight for dinner. Social climbing, huh? I've got to go home and get dressed. Hey, Duke, wear your own shirt this time. Huh. And that's Jim Fielding and myself sitting in our first car. We did our own testing in those days. She did almost 60. And that was fast enough for us to get our first order. Three Fielding specials. Went right out and bought me a brand new hat. And he hasn't had it off since, except to eat. And maybe to sleep. I just leave my hat out of this. And let's give Miss Kent a chance to eat. It's Liz. I'm afraid I've eaten too much already. The hungry guest is thrice welcome. Mm, I'll drink to that. Johnny. I'm sorry. Oh, that's quite all right. We mustn't disturb the genius at work. Because the body does look a little lumpy. Lumpy? Okay. The Idaho special. The fastest potato on the table. What are you doing? I'm moving the wheels a little closer. Mm. Lights. Everything enclosed in an envelope body. Made out of fiberglass. Could be. You know, you're catching on fast. <laughs> 
With all that talent, you're complaining? Who's complaining? Oh, and now he wants you. What are you, Liz, a woman or a mouse? Uh, don't answer that. Uh, Scotty, don't you think it's time you said something? You're perfectly right, Abby. I think it's about time for another toast. I give you the success of the X-150. The fastest car on the road. To the most beautiful. The winner! Against all obstacles. It's wonderful, Liz. What do you think, Smitty? She knows what I think. I've been telling her all along. It's great. You know, Liz, I always knew you'd do a good job. From the first moment you saw me, I know. Well, I'll make the changes in the morning. It won't take me long. Liz, I hate to ask you, but could you make the changes tonight? I promised the fiberglass boys I'd be ready for them in the morning. Nothing doing, slave driver. The lady's been working every night for two weeks. Tonight, I'm taking her dancing. If you'd like to drag along with us, I'm only kidding, of course. Why don't you, Johnny? What? You could stand some time off for yourself. We're going to Pineland. Maybe I'll join you later. Well, don't knock yourself out. Liz, if you're smart, you'll take your own car. It's a long walk back. Ah. Hey, Johnny, the master brake cylinder's awful close to the exhaust. Of course, I could put an extension to the frame, weigh about 10 more pounds, but... Hey, Johnny, I said... Smitty, why don't we just follow the plans? I guess you could put it all into one paragraph. High school, college, and art school. Every bit of it by working my own way. My family didn't have a penny. Of course, in a way, I, I guess it was sort of fun. That's all there is to tell about me. I'm just a dull little cookie. Well, how about both of you? I want to know everything. Well, having, having born gagged at birth on a silver spoon, I was immediately sent to Princeton, recognized that Jesus. happily expelled, and I joined the Air Force. Why did I please? It was... Well, I was a... Go ahead. Well, thank you. I was merely going to add that modesty forbids me carrying all my decorations with me, but if you'd care to come to my apartment, I believe that there you... You'll find pictures of them leering at you from every corner. Uh, Captain Benson, war ace. Major Benson, squadron leader. If it wasn't for my trick knee, Colonel Benson commanding a wing. Now, how about this dance, m'lady? Huh? Just a minute, pal. What's the matter? Using that trick knee for sympathy is a little played out, don't you think? Liz, how about it? How about all of us going home? Good night, Scott. Good night, folks. You can take my car, General, and follow us. Forgive him, Luke. He never went to Princeton. me to supervise the installation. He said it was for a member of the Fielding family. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Who? A dame by the name of Liz Fielding. Think. Look, 
You can call yourself the Duchess of Kalamazoo. I don't care. Well, Johnny, what do you think? I'll know a lot more after the airport race Sunday. As long as she's ready for the big one this summer. Anyway, Mr. Fielding, she sure looks good. Miss Kent did a fine job, don't you think? Jim, I just got word the race will start at the Canadian border and finish in Mexicali. But then you've got the details on the entry forms. I uh, was hoping now that you've seen the car, you'd kind of take a hand in things personally. I sent the entry forms up to your office. Good. Abby will know just what to do with them. And now, if you've finished with my granddaughter, you can send her back to the styling department. It didn't work, Scotty. What's with him, Scotty? Nothing. Forget it. Come on, Liz. Let you and I take a spin in this thing. Listen, they don't handle like the old races, Scotty. Maybe you better let Duke check you out. That's completely unnecessary. How'd she go? Oh, she's a beauty. You'll have to tromp hard in those breaks Sunday. You mean you are? No, Junior, you. I'm not gonna be there. If you don't believe me, ask Emery fired me this morning. What's he talking about, Emery? I've had enough of this maniac shenanigans. He got out here this morning in a Y model and broke every traffic rule in the book. Well, he's had it. That jerk's been gunning for me ever since you got me this job. I'll talk to Scotty about putting you on as a special driver for the X-150. forms right away, won't you? As soon as Mr. Fielding signs them, I'll lick the stamps myself. Now all I have to do is find myself a driver for that airport race Sunday. I, uh, I heard about Duke. I'm sorry. Well, anyway, we've got a real car. You know, one of these days, sweetheart, I'm gonna take you for a ride. It'll have to be soon. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, um, uh, Scotty will kill me for opening my big mouth, but... What are you driving at, Abby? Johnny, it, it was a waste of time filling out these entry forms. Fielding will never sign them. If he does, they'll never be mailed. And if I'm ever going to have a drive in the X-150, it'll have to be in our dead storage warehouse. All I'm asking for is a reason, that's all. Is there something wrong with the car? Let's say you didn't have the age or experience for the job. Did you have the age and experience when you and Scotty built your first car? Young man, are you comparing yourself to me? Shouldn't I? You've got guts, Dark. I don't know how much that'll help you to get another job. This is my business. I run it the way I want it run. All right, I'm not firing you. I'll tell Scotty you're being reassigned back to his department. You can tell Scotty I quit. Johnny, Johnny, Andy told me. I can't believe it. Well, now you can. I just got it from the horse's mouth. Liz. I didn't expect you to walk out on me, too. My name is still Fielding. You tell me how I can walk out on that. Well, 
least we got to finish her. And she was beautiful. Is beautiful, girl, is. Both inside and out. You don't even shoot a horse till it breaks his leg. Someday you'll build her again, Johnny. Just for yourself. That's a dream, Liz. The X-150 is real. She isn't just paper anymore. You can touch her. You can see her. You can drive her. She could even be in that race someday. Sure. Why not? <laughs> then what would your grandfather do, Liz? <laughs> oh, he'd blow his top. Absolutely blow his top. That settles it. We can even paint her red. And her grandpa won't know the difference. They're both crazy. If we're caught, will they put the three of us in the same cell? Check, miss. This is Mr. Scott. Stolen? Oh, no, no, no. We moved her to the warehouse this afternoon. Oh, that's all right. Good night. Duke, for the first couple laps, I want you to take it easy. Yeah, Got I know. It? I know. And watch out for the pit sickness. Right. Yeah. Johnny, why don't you go on over and sit down and relax? It's in the bag. Good luck! Scotty, I can't stand it. We've just got to win. It's the only way Jim will ever forgive us. Stubborn jackass. He should be here with us. have just completed lap number 50. 25 more to go. But the boys are not settling down. If anything, they're getting a little more reckless. The way these boys are driving, it's still anybody's race. in the race. The Ferrari's in trouble and it has pulled off the course. Duke Benson is out in the lead. As the Idaho Special has the ability of Duke Benson to stay up there with Bill Hill's Italian Ferrari.
Benson has to do now is play it safe, but wow, look at him go! Hey, slow down, will you slow? Quite a bit of excitement in Duke Benson's pit. They've signaled him to ease off, but no effect. It's my guess that Duke is out to break the course record. Ambulance to the U-turn. Ambulance to the U-turn. Spectators will please remain where they are. Stay off the track, please. I almost want it for you, Johnny boy. You okay? Oh, yeah, sure, not a scratch. That's all I wanted to know. Johnny! Oh, oh, oh. To Johnny, the brakes went. So help me. Coming around that turn, I lost them. Maybe it was a brake fade. Then the brake drums would be hot, wouldn't they? Oh, you can do better than that, Duke. How about this one? You got dust in your eye. You couldn't see the road. You couldn't even see my pit signals. You could only see the people in the stand cheering you on to a new record. I'm sorry about the pit signals, but those brakes went. Come on around a turn, I... Okay. Forget it. Johnny, he was trying to explain you didn't give him a chance. I gave him my car, didn't I? And that's all that means anything to you, that car. Well, you can have it. Go! Duke had brake trouble. You put the master cylinder too close to the exhaust. I told him you had a weight problem, Johnny. It was a tough decision for you to make. Thanks, Smitty. I made the wrong one. Maybe I had my mind on other things. Just the same, if Duke had a pulled into the pits when his brakes started to go, we would... Spencer, I thought you'd be at the ballpark these nights. Huh, with the home team in last place, who wants to watch the slaughter? <laughs> Crazy, you'll never get it ready in time. What about parts? What about equipment? What we need, we'll borrow from the plant. How about the body? That's Liz's department. Your loyalty is very touching, Miss Fielding. Well, maybe you've forgotten I helped design it. Of course, winning doesn't mean as much to me as it does to some people. Okay. You think I killed a guy? It's a wonder you didn't. Hey, what is this between you two? I'm sorry, Abby. You got an opening for an unemployed engineer? I got references. And at the last report, practically every major company will be represented when the border-to-border -border race starts next week. Incidental report. One of the top pre-race favorites, the Thunderbird, will be driven by Duke Benson, the boy who had all that tough luck at Eagle Point Airport race several weeks ago. If his car hadn't failed him, Duke tells us, he would have been an easy winner. For those of you who just tuned in, we are speaking to you from the starting point of the Border to Border Race, a three-day, 2,200-mile grind from Canada to Mexico. A race, by the way, that is expected to show the shape of things to come in the American sports car. Oh, and speaking of the shape of things to come, we'd like to have you meet Miss Border to Border, symbol of the sports car beautiful. She'll be with us for the next three days. Miss York, how about saying hello to our vast listening audience? <laughs> 
Hello, vast listening audience. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Border to Border. Now let me give you a preview of the other beauties around here. On my right is the Tiger Special, a Cannon Motors entry powered by an engine capable of achieving over 300 horsepower. Dookie. Hello. I just can't wait for Reno tonight. Uh huh. What time do you think you'll be getting in? What time do you want me there, baby? Oh, Dookie. <laughs> Of course, I'm supposed to be rooting for everybody. I just can't help rooting for you. Me too, Dookie. Liz. Be right back, baby. Business. Liz, I was hoping we might have dinner tonight. First car's expected in Reno around uh, 7.30. Of course, we could make it dinner at 6.30. Wonderful. At what hospital? We'll be waiting for you, lover boy. We got a car here ourselves. Sure, you got a car. But have you got a driver? You got a pretty good right, Junior. But in this sport, you have to shift gears with it. I'll keep it in mind. You'd better. You haven't driven for a long time. You take these mountain curves like you're on a merry-go-round, you'll wind up over a cliff. Okay, Major, consider me briefed. Now I'm gonna brief you. You've been goofing off long enough. From now on, you're on your own. <laughs> okay, Junior. War, huh? Yeah, a brand new one. All drivers into their cars. All drivers into their cars. Don't forget about our date, Liz. Join us when you get in, Junior. And the first car to start is the Tiger Special. And folks, I wish you could see her. As sleek as the animal she was named for. An entry of Cannon Motors. <laughs> Now the Thunderbird, World Motors, a heavy car, but lots of power, with Benson driving a real threat. <laughs> Next, the Tomahawk, driven by that veteran driver, Louis Tomei. <laughs> Number 14, the Flying Arrow. <laughs> now, Fielding's Idaho Special, Johnny Dart driving. On their way to their chartered planes are squads of mechanics loaded down with every kind of equipment. Flying ahead to the first night stop in Reno, they will be prepared to make any repairs their cars may need. And there goes the last car, wing south to Mexico, leaving this peaceful little Canadian town, which for the moment has held the spotlight of sporting history. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is John Heaston signing off for now. following the race by air all the way to Mexico, giving you an above-the-spot report. So far, no cars have been passed. All cars are maintaining their starting positions. What kind of a fool do you take me for? You and Doc have been building your own sports car, or didn't you think I knew? You couldn't enter her unless you called her a fielding, so you falsified the entry forms. All right, Jim. As soon as she's won the race, I'll deny she's a fielding. And I'll tell the world she's a Scot. Then I'll sit back and watch the orders roll in. I see. Now you're going into business for yourself. Why, when I took you in with me, you couldn't add two and two. I added up all right back in 36 when we were broke when I engineered that Harding loan. And that's about all you ever engineered for this company. If that was true, you would have fired me years ago. I should have. 
It's not too late. You bet it isn't. Abby, bring your book. Abby, I want you to have Ross release the following to the press. Fielding Motors regrets to announce that after an association of 30 years... 32 Mr. years. After an interrupt... After an association of 32 years, Mr. William H. Scott is leaving its employ on account... on account of other personal interests. The company wishes to announce further that this will take effect as soon as Mr. Scott has cleaned up his desk. A matter of two weeks. Two days. Did you take that down? Yes, sir. continued with only a few seconds lost. But those few seconds have allowed number 18 to move up a position. This first lap into Reno, Nevada is over 800 miles and will take the last measure of endurance from car and driver. Thanks, John. This is station KTJT, Reno, Nevada, Sam Davis reporting. In addition to John Heaston in our spotting plane, we'll hear from our ground spotters and coordinating police patrols. Patrol car sector four. Last car in road race has just passed our checkpoint. Highway's now clear for regular traffic. Okay, sector four, checkpoint five now reporting. Six, attention, clear your highway. First car's through in 30 minutes.
halfway mark, with 400 miles to go to Reno, still in first position is the Thunderbird, followed by the Tiger Special, the Tomahawk, and the Idaho Special. Scott, talk to Fielding. That's what I said, Ross. Check with him. Besides, I'm very busy right now. All right, Abby. Go ahead, ask him. Mr. Fielding wants to know if you intend leaving with certain obligations unfulfilled. Mr. Fielding thinks it is very unfair to the stockholders for you to walk out with certain important projects unfinished. Tell Mr. Fielding he should have thought of that in the first place. Tell Mr. Scott if he thinks I care a snap personally or if he thinks I've come here to beg him to stay, he is mistaken. He couldn't be mistaken about anything. And tell him not to shout. I'm trying to listen to something. Don't shout, Mr. Fielding. A man in my position has certain responsibilities. Yeah. In first place, the Thunderbird. Second place, the Tiger Special. Followed by the Tomahawk. Followed by the most ridiculous cars ever manufactured. All right, Abby. Tell Mr. Scott I have changed my mind. If he thinks that pile of junk of his has any chance anywhere, he's lost my respect. His opinions could be of no possible value to me anyway. And tell him if his car finishes better than last, I'll buy him a new hat, which he can use looking for another job. Tell him to put his money where his mouth is. Why, Scotty, are you suggesting a real wager? I'm suggesting a bet for money. Five thousand too much? Make it ten and pick your own car. The Thunderbird. Uh, you see, Scotty, he studied every car in the race. He knows Duke's the favorite. Make him give you a handicap. With his judgment, he's got a handicap. You're so right. And of that $10,000, I'll take five. Dollars. Special behind us. Dark's nowhere in sight. leading, followed by the Tiger Special. And here's a flash. Just beyond the Nevada state line, the Tomahawk spun out, and the Idaho Special is now in third place. Reno, five miles. Ladies and gentlemen, we're speaking to you from the corner of East Commercial Row and North Virginia Street in downtown Reno, beneath the arch that says, Reno, the biggest little city in the world. And here they come! The first car crew is the Thunderbird driven by Duke Benson. We've just received word from the highway patrol that the second car, which is number 17, driven by Bill Hill, has just passed the five-mile sign. Guess who? Duke Benson, king of drivers. Yeah, right on schedule. Come on, baby, let's go eat. Duke, did you see him? How far back do you think he is? Oh, who knows? Come on, I'm hungry. So go eat. Thanks. Come on, baby, let's go. We're going to wait for him. And starve to death? That's good enough for me.
The second car through, the Tiger Special, driven by Bill Hill. Here comes the third car. It's Johnny. Got old special with Johnny Dark driving, the third car through. Bill sounds okay. Third isn't bad, Johnny. No, not bad, Junior. Now maybe we can go to dinner, huh? When will we finish with her tonight? Then we'll really show you some stuff. What was wrong? Nothing important. The ignition of the fuel pump. I don't know. Where's the garage? Back of the Riverside Hotel. Come on, Spence. Checks out okay, Smitty. Ignition okay, Johnny. Must be the fuel pump. Could be the gas line. Some of those guys practically rebuilt their engines. Why not? They brought half their factories with them. Come on, let's get with it. Liz, you know, we're liable to be here all night. All night? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess in that case, I'd better stick around. What for? Hmm. Just in case you need some moral support. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, go back to work, Slade. Hey, what time is it? One o'clock, but we found it, Liz. Sediment in the gas tank. Whoever welded the tank after the wreck must have left his shoes in it. Oh, even a shoe would taste good to me right now. Johnny? Uh huh? Who are feeding me? Smitty, get us something to eat. I gotta check every inch of that gas. Give me some ham and eggs. We're gonna be here till morning. Oh, now, that's silly, Johnny. Look, you're going to the hotel and take a shower, and then we're going to get some dinner, and then you're going to be mad. <laughs> Liz, will you please leave me alone? It is a pleasure. Go ahead and fix your old gas line. And suppose you do lose the race. Who cares? I care! Talk to you. Oh, Doug, it's so late, and I've got a. And you want me to have pity on you and let you go to bed, huh? This is Reno, remember? I certainly do, and I don't care if it were China. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm snapping at you for. You're a nice guy. If I'm such a nice guy, why don't you come and talk to me? You certainly pick the strangest times. Well, I'm a creature of impulse, Liz. Oh, come on, how about it? My idea ring any bells? Not the kind you're thinking of. Okay. I'm sorry. By the way, where is Johnny? That mechanic? That self-centered, egotistical, narrow-minded... Oh, Liz, you got me all confused. You just spent half the night with a guy. I just spent half the night with a clogged gas line. And as far as I'm concerned, I hope he never gets it fixed. I hope... I hope he comes in last. You want him that much, Liz? <laughs> All I want is some sleep. Good night. Going up? No. Come on, Johnny. Better get some coffee or something. I thought you said you were going to wake me. How is she? All righty, come on, let's go. The race starts in a couple of hours. Today into Las Vegas is a short one stressing speed and more speed. Dookie. 
Duke Benson having come in last night, two minutes ahead of the number two car, will start two minutes ahead today. And now with pleasure, we present the Honorable Pat McCarran, senior senator from the state of Nevada, who will drop the starting flag. Look, Liz, about last night. It's kind of hard for me to apologize, but now when anything happens to the car, I just forget about everything else. If you like, I can refresh your memory. That's the trouble with dames. You never forget anything. Look, Liz. Come on, Johnny. Let's go. back with you again, picking up the second lap from Reno to Las Vegas. At this moment, the Tomahawk is running fourth, but driving hard and pushing Johnny Dark, who is in the number three spot. The Tiger Special is second, and the Thunderbird is holding the lead. What? Uh, uh, 20 miles to uh, Virginia City and then down. Are you all right, Smitty? Sure, I'm fine. some very fast and expert handling, he did a complete spin around and kept right on going. Those boys down there really got what it takes. And there goes number 44, the Tomahawk. According to our latest report from John Heaston, it'll be a few minutes before the next car comes through. And incidentally, John is now switching from a helicopter to an airplane, so he can keep up with the terrific speed these cars will make on the flat. We will hear from him again right after our next station identification. Ground spotter report. 
At the 300 mile mark, Duke Benson's lead is less than half what it was this morning. Phil Clark in the Tiger Special is number two, but losing ground, with Johnny Dark close on his heels. All of which points to the fact that not only Dark, but his car has staying power, stamina. Dark is continuing to gain on Duke Benson. Did you hear that, Eddie? Tell Jim Philby to stop counting out that 10,000. You've broken my radio. Where are you going? Radio in Scotty's office. Uh, Mr. Fielding. Can't you squeeze any more out of it? She's open all the way now. 147. Special, being crowded by Johnny Dark, spun out on a sharp left turn. Dark, holding to the inside, took the curve beautifully and is now in second place. Duke Benson had better look to his rearview mirror. Since we've hit these desert straightaways, the Idaho Special has gained steadily on the Thunderbird. The big question is, can he keep it up? Which turn, Smitty? Which turn? Leaking oil. Can we make it to Vegas? I don't know, but we can try. Duke Benson is still out in the lead. That unfortunate spin out and delay cost Johnny Dark his second place, but it hasn't slowed car or driver. We're out of oil, Johnny. The pressure's gone. Branson covering the border-to-border -border race from the heart of downtown Las Vegas. Just before going on the air, I was notified that Johnny Dark's Idaho Special, which was in second place, ran into trouble about 20 miles from here. Here comes the first car. going to be just the way you wanted it to be. Like I wanted it to be? What do you mean? You said you wanted him to come in last. Duke, I'm not joking. He's in trouble. What? He may be hurt. Oh, don't worry, baby. He can handle himself.
Pardon me, Dark, but what's the story? What happened? Can't you leave us alone? Well, lady, I just wanted to find out what later. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as soon as we check with the officials, we'll have the correct timings on each car as it comes in on this lap from Reno to Las Vegas. And according to Dark's co-driver, that cracked oil pan spelled finish to the main bearings. Had a frozen engine, which means a major overhaul, putting Johnny Dark definitely out of the race. Well, it looks as though I win a bet, Scotty. Unfortunately for Dark, his car was entered without a full complement of mechanics and without extra equipment. All of which means in our book that fielding motors didn't do right by Johnny Dark. But it isn't a fielding. Sue me. Well, if they think it's a fielding, I've got this company's reputation to protect. That fool kid. If he had as much brains as he has guts, he'd have known he was licked yesterday. Call transportation. Have a company plane stand by. I want that car back in this race. Even if it costs you 10,000? Even if it costs me the 10,000. Transportation, this is Mr. Fielding's secretary. No use. Cylinder walls are too badly scored. We're dead, Johnny. We need a whole new block. Huh? Looks like the war is over. Might as well get some sleep. Who needs sleep now? Hi, right, Liz. Yeah. I'll clean up this mess in the morning if I'm not too badly hung over. Night. Good night, sir. Tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna take Las Vegas apart. This pile of junk has come between us for the last time. Liz, Liz. So I lost the race. Who cares? I care. Oh, Liz. I had it coming to me. Well, anyway, it was a wonderful try. Well, don't just stand there. Liz, get Johnny to his hotel so he can get some sleep. It's no use, Scotty. The block is shot. That's what I figured. Boys? There's a block in there. Haul it out. Oh, Scotty. This final day's run takes the cars down through the California desert to the Mexican border, a distance of some 400 miles from here. The most important development since yesterday is that the Idaho Special is still in the race. Somebody has pulled off a minor miracle. But it'll take another miracle for Dark to overtake the first three cars. Duke Benson's Thunderbird, Phil Hill's Tiger Special, and Louis Tomei's Tomahawk. Tell me, all right, Johnny. Scotty, I can't thank you. Just get in and drive. You keep your eyes on the map this time. Tell them in advance. has driven a fine race, and from here it looks like he's the winner. Johnny Dark is still third, but it looks pretty certain that he'll take the Tiger Special, which will bring him in second. And at this moment, the Flying Arrow is making a bid for fourth place.
17 is out. Now for the Thunderbird. That was a fine race, son. Thank you. And Liz, you didn't fool me for a minute. I knew all the time you were tied in with these pirates. That's quite a contraption you have there, Doc. You might be interested in it, Jim. Have a look. What is this? It's an engine. I know it's an engine, but that's a feeling. You told me. No, you told me, remember? Great car, Mr. Fielding. Wouldn't mind having one myself. Yeah, thank How you. How soon do you expect to go into production? Well, that's a question you'll have to ask my chief engineer, Mr. Scott. Well, all I can say is... Well, you better get this down, boys. The motto of Fielding Motors is, give the public what it wants when it wants it. Production plans will get underway as soon as Mr. Fielding and I return to the factory. Got it? Come on, Tom. <laughs> we did it, Jim. We did it. Why not? It's a Fielding. <laughs> Hold it. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Thank you. Congratulations, Junior. Thanks, Duke. I guess I briefed you too well. <laughs> Over here, Duke. Johnny? Huh? How long do you think it would take you to build another X-150? What? Oh, just a little one. About so big. <laughs> I'll start on it right away. Don't you think it'd be a good idea if you two got married first? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Junior, take off. 